Hey guys, uh, we're up on the roof in Brooklyn. <laughs> Today I wanted to talk about uh, the use and importance of uh, training with weapons, whether it be screamer sticks or uh, uh, training knives or nunchucks. Um, the reason I train with them is to uh, <coughs> increase my array of potential um, self-defense items that I can use, whether it's a stick on the street, a brick, <coughs> if I happen to get into a conflict, but it's also for training purposes. If you just train with your hands, um, I equate that to sort of driving down a one-lane street. If you get into traffic, you're basically stuck. If all I know how to do is train with my hands and uh, um, protect myself with my hands, and somebody comes to me and they have a stick, then I'm in trouble because I have not trained, uh, I may have trained the depth, the distance, the positioning for fists and for feet and for headbutts and elbows, but <laughs> this adds an additional two feet. If I need to you know, train with somebody or fight with somebody who actually has that extra reach, and I have not trained my entries with the same type of utensil, or if I disarm somebody and then I have the stick and I don't know what I'm doing, I can't even swing it properly, then uh, I'm in a serious trouble. So um, I equate the training of oh, uh, free hand or open hand uh, and with the training of tools or the training of weapons to driving down a multi-lane highway. <laughs> if there's traffic in one, I can always change to a different lane and still reach my uh, my intended destination. So, um, with regard to training with what these are, these are uh, Burt, Kane, Rattan sticks, train for a screamer. A couple of key things uh, when training with these that um, most people will, will, will uh, uh, tell you to do is, the first one is when you're swinging the stick and rotating until your wrist has that play that you can actually do a pretty much straight down twist instead of out here. Uh, keep your hands somewhat close grip firm. Never when doing the twist use these two fingers because it's very easy to just pull it out disarm. What you notice most people will do <coughs> is they'll come out here and you know they'll use these fingers and they'll play and, and it looks really cool but it's very very dangerous uh, in true combat. So what I, what I do is even though I keep all of my fingers to make sure that if my wrist is not completely open or completely loose, I still maintain contact with all of my fingers even though it still looks a little bit loose. It's, I can still regain that grip very, very, very quickly. And that's, that's the most that I will open up my hands. It's just a little bit as I do that spin. And, uh, you know, in practicing and training, you always want to stretch. So a couple of things people do is they sit there and spin it up and spin it down to loosen up that wrist to make sure that the ligaments are warm so you don't tear anything or hurt anything as you get in there and practice with somebody else. <coughs> Another thing that people <coughs> that you will learn is that it's always good to leave two or three finger tips of extra stick underneath your grip. Uh, for one reason is it's also a weapon. You know, you're, you're always thinking about swinging and getting, but once you're in there, you can always use that as a, a nice little butt to the head, to the throat, to the sternum, to the collarbone, <laughs> anything like that. You'll see in more of your advanced training that it's, you know, one, two, butt, or, or one, two, butt. <laughs> that kind of thing is what you do when you're doing partner training. A third reason is this is also a tool to help you in trapping. Yes, you can trap somebody with the long end of the stick, but you can also trap somebody with the short end of the stick, whether it's wrist, whether it's, you know, wrap around their head and get around the throat. It's an extra piece that helps you lock them in position. Um, so it's, to me, it's very important to keep that. <coughs> so, you know, when you start uh, training with a stick, you, you'll most likely go through the initial moves. And it's just generally an X. First few motions are just one, two, one, two. Later on, you'll go up, down, up, down, or across. But just to begin, you know, just get that flow of motion. Of one, two, one, two. And it's not just you know here; it's actually going in there. And you want to train so that it's not like a, not really like a whip. I don't really train like a whip, but you know, it could be argued that it's sort of a whipping motion and the whip snaps towards the end of touching your, or hitting your, uh, 
your target, which you generally want to be sort of like the center line here, straight down. You want to bat if you're coming, if you're coming back. If you're going through, then it's a smack and then a, a retreat. It's a smack and a retreat. Smack and a retreat. And you generally always want to bring back to sort of that guard hand, training with one stick or training with two sticks, because you know if I come over here then that's just one motion. I really don't have anything unless I come back in this, <coughs> in this way. So once you get that one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, you can do it, you know, you can start on this side. But at the same time, you know, as you develop it, you always want to keep motion, of course, because motion is important. Um, there are different levels, you know, there's hitting at the knees, there's hitting at the waist, and there's hitting at the face, um, you know, you also have stabs and jabs, you can do so many things, and what you'll notice over time is that a lot of the motions sort of mimic many of your open hand sort of punches and uh, you know, deflecting uh, positions or deflecting actions. So, you know, you can get into it, do two hand training, get a lot of flips or this type of motion, up, up, train this, again, you always want to have your limbs sort of loose open, you always want to stretch so you don't tear anything, hurt it, because it's actually rotating your shoulder joints, you want to make sure that they're open, your wrist, you know, your elbow, it's also pivoting, so make sure that your, your joints are open. And once you, you know, once you uh, get familiar with the strokes and just, you know, sort of the strokes and how to bring it back, then, you know, you'll start to realize your distance. I'm not getting too close to my camera because I don't want to bash it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as you see, as you train, you can actually see the distance <coughs> and train your focus on the distance. You know, the distance of this stick adds... Again, almost another two feet here to my strike. So again, training with, with, with weapons helps you further your understanding of the distance principles, further your understanding of the motion principles, the, the uh, position principles, and I mean, in general, it just makes you a much more well-rounded fighter, more well-rounded training partner for other people <laughs> and for yourself to just learn the true uh, concept or true essence of what we are doing. It's all about motion. It's all about motion and the reaction of motion. Two, item, two bodies moving in, in, in opposite directions or two bodies moving in the same direction. It's all of that sort of physics sort of concepts, um, you know, where if, if I pull somebody's head into my knee, it doubles the power. It's all, it's all of those concepts are relative to motion. And it's the very essence of what studying fighting is, is studying motion. How does something react to this? How, do, how does it react? Like what happens when I put myself in this position when somebody's in a forward forward motion or in a diagonal motion or if they're coming into me? You know, how can I then take their power, their motion, their forward going uh, energy and convert it into something that protects me but hurts them. So, you know, that's why I train not just with open hands, not just, you know, any particular style, whether it's Taekwondo for kicking, whether it's Wing Chun for center line theory, whether it's boxing for, you know, quick jab, <coughs> uppercut so that I can transfer from Wing Chun straight to a quick boxing punch and then back to Wing Chun. Or if I can do a quick snap kick and that to, to get my entry in there and then get into grappling, close range or Wing Chun. <coughs> type fighting, fighting with, uh, with tools, fighting with weapons is extremely important in helping you, again, understand the overall function, the overall motion uh, pattern, and improve distance, because if, again, if, if I'm up against somebody who has a stick, my reaction is much different. I'm not going to get in close, because he can smack me in the head from much further distance. For me to get in close, I have to take into account A, his arm, and then B, his hand. I mean, excuse me, B, his, his weapon. And a right hand stick has a different width than nunchucks. So I can practice with nunchucks as much as I want. But 
if I don't have different degrees of length or different degrees of distance that I'm training with specific tools and knowing that, you know, yeah, so nunchucks can actually have that same, you see the same cross, you see the same cross, you know, there's cooler things you can do with nunchucks, nunchucks are always that, you know, that Bruce Lee type of effect, but, <laughs> and they're illegal or illegal in many states, including New York, these are actually gifts, a gift to me, but, uh, you know, training with those different you, you, Utensils is extremely important, and then you have the training knife. So you got the length of the nunchucks, you have the length of the rattan stick, and then you have the length of the knife. A knife is much different, much much different than a stick, because it cuts. I mean, it stabs, it cuts. So the motions are generally the same, you know, same cross, but it, you know, the same jabbing like I did with the rattan stick. You can actually jab with a rattan stick. You can't necessarily jab the nunchucks, although you can't do a whip with the nunchucks where the end comes and hits you. But with a knife, <coughs> uh, you still keep your very firm grip, you know, and you're not trying to loosen it. You know, switch it between hand and hand like you see in the movies. You generally use it with one hand. Unless you're heavy dexterous like I am, I can actually train with both hands. <coughs> we generally have one hand, and anybody who says, you know, uh, that, yeah, you know, use your hand when you're trying to beat them out there. If you want to get your hand cut, you're more than welcome to do that. The way that I train is something that, uh, you know, I've seen in a couple of uh, prison fighting videos or books talking about how, you know, prisoners with the shanks and things like that, and then I find it very practical. It's where you want to protect your your vital organs, you know, you want, I'd rather have my hand cut than my throat cut, so I keep my hand up here, I keep my spare hand up here to protect my throat, in case it happens to get in there really quick <coughs> and slice me, but again, it's, you know, it's the same sort of side, uh, X, and then there's, of course, up, down, side, side, X, X, <coughs> there are many things that you can do, and again, it, it deals with position, it deals with movement, mobility, and it deals with distance. If I'm way, way, way out here, I can swing my knife all I want, it doesn't matter. But as soon as I get in close, that's really, you know, when you need to be prepared. Your hand comes up here, your hand, the other, your knife is sort of right in front of you. Keep it straight, aimed at the person, not like this, not like this. You're not stabbing them like this, nobody fights like that. If they do, then they're in serious trouble. So, I get uh, training with a knife is very similar. You start slow with sort of the diagonal slashes, diagonal slashes. Learn your distance, learn your mo motion. You generally want to, if you can, get to the outside. Like, let's say this is my opponent's right side. He's got a knife in his right side, and I got a knife in my right side. I want to train to go on the outside because it's much more difficult to do that than to do that. Spin the body this way, spin the body that way, it's a little awkward. So, <laughs> one of the first things that you know I try to train, at least when warming up, is always just moving to the outside with a nice little slash down on the wrist. After you slash down on the wrist, of course, then you can use your free hand, push that wrist down, and you come up and you know, you try to finish him off. Don't necessarily try to kill him, but try to get him a stabby in the shoulder to further disable that arm something that will finish that altercation. Again, this is an instance where you have a knife and he has a knife. If he has a knife and somehow you just kick it out of his hand and then it's on the ground and you grab it, then you know you don't want to kill him, but you definitely want to stop the situation as quickly as possible. You don't want him to have the knife anymore, so you have the knife. If he picks up the knife again, then you're back to where you were, and that's not where, that's just not a very healthy situation. So. Again, once you have the knife in your possession, whether it's you've disarmed him somehow with a you know quick snap kick to his hand and it pops up in the air and you do your kung fu grab or you get it off the ground or you happen to also have a knife, whether you're in a restaurant or you pick up a, a butter knife, it doesn't really matter. A butter knife can still stab and penetrate the skin, it can still defend. You have your knife, you're practicing your, your quick diagonal slashes, and you can practice them up, upwards, upwards, side to side, up down. Once you get that down and, and you understand your distance and you can get in there and 
you make a quick slash and then get back out, and then make a quick slash and get back out. You're staying mobile, you know, stay mobile. Get in there, get out. Then you can get into more advanced <coughs> multi uh, action attacks or multi action, you know, a defense and then an attack followed up by an attack. This is sort of his knife is in the left hand and he comes at me and I can slash down and then guard this arm, put my hand in control of that arm that has a knife and come up. And a lot of a lot of one a lot of will train you to stab in, twist, and then tear down so they cut. You stab in, twist, and then you cut him completely open. <laughs> so a knife is a very dangerous um, piece of equipment. It is a functional piece of equipment for eating, for cutting food. It is very dangerous when it's in somebody's hand and they're trying to hurt you. Um, your objective, if possible, is number one, of course, to run. If you're in a situation where you can't run, and let's say you're on a rooftop and there's no way down except through this person and you have to disarm them and you to have the knife, you want to end this in a non-lethal way, not deadly way, but in a way that um, basically stops him from continuing to come at you. If you pick up the knife and he still comes at you, then you, you really don't have a choice. You could try to hit him without the knife, but you still have, you, your one hand now has a knife. So you could only have one free hand. So he came at you with a knife, he was the aggressor. You can't defend yourself uh, in, in many states uh, without getting into serious trouble. But if it's life or death for you, you really don't have a choice. You have to make that decision. You have to come over that hurdle. And in order to be prepared for that, you have to train. You have to train with these utensils, you have to train with these tools, you have to train with these weapons. The right hand stick, um, you don't have to train with nunchucks, you don't have to train with, with real ones, they make foam padded ones. I like to train with nunchucks because many of the motions, many of the, the motions that they have access to allow me to train things that I wouldn't otherwise be able to train. Um, here again, these were a, a gift from somebody who was leaving the state and he happened to bring them in, so otherwise I wouldn't have bought them in a state where they're illegal. But you can get uh, padded, foam padded nunchucks, which can be just as heavy with the chain and, and you know, great motion. <laughs> and you can train with those, and those are not illegal in the states, including New York, from my understanding. But, um, you know, again, if you just train open hands with no weapons, no, no tools, I, I feel as if it's not a one-dimensional art that you're practicing, but you're not getting the exposure to some of the finer details about motion. That is, in essence, what we are studying. The motion, the reaction to motion, the manipulation of motion, uh, and uh, you know, ultimately becoming a much better practitioner. Um, you know, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, I really appreciate all the feedback I got from my previous videos. I hope you keep watching. I hope that you learned something. I'm able to express something in, in a way that's easy for you folks to follow. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Thank you.